Hi everyone, it's Kathy, and I am excited to share the chicken pack. Sabrina from Somewhere Fun was kind enough to send me the chicken pack to play around with, so I came up with six cards. And in the chicken pack, you receive the chicken soup stamp set, the chicken coop stamp set, the chicken wire background stamp, six pieces of red cardstock, six white note cards, six red envelopes, and three sheets of six by six wood grain cardstock in different colors. So there's a lot of stuff in this kit and I had so much fun playing with it. In this particular video, I'm only going to show how I created three of the six cards, but I will share the other three cards at the end of this video. And if you want me to do a video showing how I created the other three cards, drop a comment below and let me know because I did record everything. So for my first card, I started out with one of the pieces of red cardstock and I stamped the chicken wire background using rock and red ink from Catherine Pooler Designs. I stamped it twice to get a really nice crisp impression, although I don't know that that was necessary because the stamp right out of the package stamped really crisp and really, really nice. So after I stamped that background, I set it aside and then I stamped out my little chickens. Since I'm going to be using my Copic markers, I stamped the images using Memento Tuxedo Black ink onto a piece of Cougar Super Smooth cardstock. I'll make sure to have the chicken pack as well as all of the other supplies that I used listed in the description box below. So for all of the chickens, I used the same colors. I tried to keep the number of markers that I used to a minimum, which really didn't work because I ended up using a whole bunch, but that's neither here nor there. So for the excited chicken, I used C3, C1, my colorless blender, Y38, Y17, R27, and R17. The reason that I used my cool gray markers was just to add in a little bit of shading and I concentrated those shadows where they would naturally be like the back of her head, under her beak, and then just to add a little bit more detail to her wings, I did some really fine flick marks just to add a little bit more detail to her wings. Once I was done with the coloring, I did run it through my scan and cut machine to cut out the chicken, and then I started to work on my background for the excited chicken. Since it looked like she was jumping up and down and celebrating something, I decided to create a background with the excited words that a chicken would say, like balk and cackle. I stamped the sentiments randomly onto a piece of Nina Desert Storm cardstock, and for that I used my favorite things, Craft Hybrid Ink. And there was no rhyme or reason to my placement. I did literally just very random stamping. I wanted to have that piece kind of be cut at an angle on the front of my card. So I did use my ruler and I drew light pencil marks just so I would know where to concentrate, concentrate the stamping so that I didn't stamp more than I really needed to. Once I was done stamping that little piece of cardstock, I trimmed it down with my paper trimmer and then I adhered it to a piece of white cardstock just so that I could have a small little border around the edge of that. And then I used my paper trimmer to cut off the excess white cardstock. I adhered that to the chicken wire background panel and had to do a little bit of trimming on the one side there because it was hanging off the edge a little bit. And the chicken pack comes wrapped with this really cute red, black, and white twine, and I wanted to incorporate that into my card. I put a little bit of adhesive on the back of that panel and wrapped the twine around and stuck it down just so that it would hold it into place. Then I used small pieces of washi tape to hold it even more. I do have the twine folded over so it would be doubled up, and then I tied a bow and I used a dot of glue to adhere that to the front of the card panel. I coated the back of that panel with a whole bunch of foam tape and then added that to the front of my note card. I did put some foam tape on the back of my chicken and adhered her in place and then I had stamped the word congrats and run it through my die cut machine with a fishtail banner die 
and used my tape runner to adhere that to the front of the card. Then I decided that I needed to add a little bit more white, so I grabbed my glossy white Nouveau Drops and started to put them on the red card stock and then decided just to go all out and I added it to the background where I stamped the sentiments. And then after I was done with that, I looked at it and I thought it needed a little bit more texture. So off camera, I had stamped the, there's a little stamp for chicken feed and I used VersaFine Onyx Black ink just to kind of randomly stamp on that sentiment background just to fill in a little bit more space. And that finishes up my first card. For my second card, I kept this one pretty clean and simple as well. And when I was thinking about how to color in the stock pot, I didn't really want to do it in grays to make it like a stainless steel stock pot. So I consulted with the Google and I found some really cool stock pots in a bunch of different colors. Since I was going to be using some of the background paper for this card, I wanted the contrast to be very prominent. So I chose to color my stock pot lime green because I actually saw a picture of a lime green enamel coated stock pot. So I started with YG17 and added that kind of around the edges and along the bottom. The picture that I was looking at while I was coloring the stock pot it actually had an ombre effect where it was a darker green at the bottom and a lighter green up at the top. Once I was done with the YG-17, I did bring in YG-03 and then YG-01. And the YG-01 was just a tiny bit too bright, so I end up going over the whole stock pot with the YG-03. And it worked out well because the YG-01 still somehow was shining through that YG-03. I added in a couple of shadows around the chicken on the inside of the stock pot and then added some darker around the rim and the handles of the stock pot. I colored the chicken pretty much the same way, you know, using the C3 to add in the shadows where it would be the darkest and extended those out a little bit with the C1 and then blended it with my colorless blender just to get rid of some of the harsher lines. Now I also ran that image through my scan and cut machine and I had a little bit of a mishap. My machine decided that the chicken didn't need a tail. So in order to fix that, I stamped the image a second time and only colored up the chicken. Then I fussy cut the chicken one thing I like to do when fussy cutting is cut away most of the excess cardstock. It makes it easier to get really close to the image. And for this one, I wanted to make sure that I was cutting pretty much right on that stamped line because I'm basically going to do paper piecing so that my chicken that's in the stock pot is a whole chicken with a tail. Once I was done with the fussy cutting, I did go around the edge with a water-based black marker just to clean up some of the not so perfectly cut lines. Once I was done with that, it was pretty much time to put my card together. I had run a piece of white cardstock through my Gemini Junior with a peekaboo circle die from Gina Marie Designs, as well as a wavy edger die from Whimsy Stamps. And I adhered that to a piece of the wood grain patterned paper from the kit. I did end up trimming that down just a little bit, so it would end up being slightly smaller than my card base. And I used my tape runner to adhere that piece to the front of my card. Next, I used a tiny little bit of liquid glue to put my chicken in a stock pot back together, and then I added a bunch of foam tape on the back of the chicken. And then I set that aside before putting it on the front of the card because I thought it might be a good idea to stamp my sentiment before I did that. So I put my card base in my Misty and lined up the sentiment Get Well Soon. I inked that up with a VersaFine Onyx Black ink and stamped that down. Once I had done that, then I removed the release paper from the back of my chicken and set him into place. To finish it up, I added a couple of red jeweled hearts around the chicken and then off screen, I decided to add the word soup to the stock pot. So I stamped that also using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink 
and that finishes up my second card. Moving on to the third card, I wanted to have a lot of dimension and I wanted to have like um, kind of like a, an actual chicken coop kind of look to it. So I used a frame die from Hello Bluebird and I cut it out from white cardstock and I cut it out from a piece of the wood grain cardstock. I placed it in my Misty and taped down it. I traced inside the squares because I wanted to stamp on a piece of acetate, which I was watching a video from my friend Renee over at Delaney Jane Cards and she reminded me that I had embossable acetate in my stash and I thought that that would be perfect for this particular card. So after I traced the squares, I used a piece of painter's tape to hold my acetate in place. I took the smaller chicken wire stamp and inked it up with Versafine Claire, I think it's Morning Mist. Yes, Versafine Claire Morning Mist ink. And I very carefully stamped on the acetate. Stamping on acetate can be tricky because it is somewhat slippery. So when you go to pull up your acrylic block, you wanna make sure that you pull straight up so it doesn't slide and smear your image. Now the initial thought in my head for this was I was going to emboss the chicken wire with silver embossing powder, but for whatever reason, I don't have silver embossing powder. So I used clear embossing powder instead, and it worked out fine. I think that the chicken wire is a little bit more subtle than I would have liked, but I'm still happy with how it turned out. And I held it down with a pair of tweezers and used a brush just to kind of push some of the stray embossing powder bits around. Um, I didn't use my anti-static powder tool, obviously, enough, so I did have a couple of stray bits here and there. But they were pretty easy to move around with just using a dry brush. Then I brought in my heat tool and I heat set the embossing powder. After I was done heat embossing, I set that aside so it could cool off. And then I grabbed a piece of white cardstock and used tumbled glass distress oxide ink with a makeup brush just to add a little bit of color to that panel that is going to go behind the windows. Since my chickens are white, I wanted to make sure that they stood out from the background as well. I used score tape on the back side of the blue wood grain frame so I could adhere the piece of acetate. Then I wanted to have dimension between the frames so that the so that the chickens looked like they were set back a little bit further. So I used my sticky foam strips and placed that on the back side on top of the acetate, and then I adhered a white frame behind that. I did have a little bit of overhang from the acetate, so I just used my scissors to trim that off. I stamped a couple of the different chickens onto a piece of white cardstock, again with the Memento Tuxedo Black ink onto Nina Cougar Super Smooth cardstock. I colored them up and then I cut them out. I used the frame as a guide and lightly drew squares with a pencil just so I would know where to put the chickens. And I used liquid adhesive to hold them into place. Once I had all of my little chickens in place, I used liquid glue to adhere the popped up frame with the acetate windows with the chicken wire on top of that. Then I grabbed some really light gray ink from My Favorite Things and used the big chicken wire background stamp and stamped that on one of the white note cards. After that I used liquid glue to adhere my chicken coop into place and I had stamped one of the sentiments using Versafine Onyx Black ink onto a piece of white cardstock and ran that through my Gemini Junior with a fishtail banner. I used my liquid glue to adhere the sentiment in place, and that finishes up my third card for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have a favorite of these three cards, let me know in the comments below. And again, if you want me to post a video showing the, how I created the other three cards, um, again, leave that in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.